Team, glad you all joined me here today. I see you're all in your seats, you're ready to go. We even got a couple of you standing in the back. I am sorry, I was away over the weekend, but it was all for a good cause. We were talking with the administrative staff in our engineering wing, and I think I've convinced them to upgrade us to a brand new auditorium. I'm talking state of the art. So, got something good coming up for you here. Today, we're just gonna jump right in. Steel welding example. Again, this is a real juicy one for the civil PE exam, structural specific. You've been requesting a couple more welding examples, so here we go. Buckle up. An L4 by 8 LLV, so that's long leg vertical. It means that the longest dimension, so your 8 inch dimension, is your vertical component right here, and then hence they back that up, just giving you that dimension. But when you see LLV, that's that's actually a, a professional nomenclature. We, we write that on our construction documents and our uh, design documents. Is welded to a column using the shielding uh, metal arc process, or the SMAW is another abbreviation you can see that as, and an E70XX electrode. What is the required fillet weld size if the angle is welded on both of the vertical legs only? All right, so let's giddy up here. So. Although we're going to be jumping into the AASC steel manual, you all know it, you all love it. Boom, I got the maroon right here, but we're gonna be going into the blue one digitally. I want to remind all of you that the book that helped me out on the PE that I use uh, a lot is this blue design of welded structures. It is so inexpensive and it's a diesel book. So I'll leave a link below. I'm not sponsored or affiliated in any way. These guys just freaking rock. This book is jam-packed and it's cheap as all hell. So get it for yourself. I got a couple tabs here. Take it into the PE exam. I love this thing specifically for welding. I mean, that's all it is. It's all about welding. So it's more than you're ever gonna wanna know about welds. But I'm gonna be referencing that today. So that's why I bring it up. So what do we wanna do first? Well, first we wanna break down our welds into, a, uh, into lines. And what do I mean by that? Well you can actually, instead of taking an effective area of your weld, so if you were to have a line of weld, you would have some effective thickness, and then you'd have some effective length. That would get you an effective area, and you can use that to design your weld, and that is in uh, the ASC steel manual, that's in chapter J. Or you can convert it for simple welding procedures, like for fillet welds, and you can just take the effective width out of the equation where all you need to keep track of is your effective length. So we are gonna do that, that's most helpful. So what's, what are the forces acting on this weld? We have a P of 40 kips. They don't specify LRFD or ASD, unfortunately. So let's rock and roll with LRFD. Let's do both, we'll do both, we'll do both. Don't cut, we'll do both. Uh, so we won't worry about LRFD or ASD until the end. But we have a 40 kip reaction pointing downward. So that means that your resistance is gonna be through the weld here via shear. Because if we do statics here for, I'll get real basic for summation Fy equal to zero, you have negative 40 kips equals, and then you just have your reaction at that weld. So equals R. So that means that R needs to equal 40 kips going up. Well, so that's just, that's just a shear force. It's plain and simple. So we know that we have V equal to 40 kips, but we have our handy dandy eccentricity, which means that we have a moment lurking around here somewhere. So we all know that moment is just a uh, force times the perpendicular distance, if I can say perpendicular, right? And that's what we have both of those. We have 40 is our force. And then, so that's acting down as it shows. And then we have our perpendicular distance, boom, right there of 2.25 inches. So that creates a moment ultimately doing that about our weld. I'm going to erase that because it's getting a little ugly. Getting a little ugly. So moment is just going to be 40 kips times 2.25 inches. That's going to get us 90 kip inch. 
Uh, for moments, I typically leave it in kip inches for units because when you're uh, analyzing and finding the capacity of your weld, you will find it in a kip per inch basis at the end, okay? That's how we're going to break down everything. You're going to break down all your demand, no matter what form it's in, all the way down into a kip per inch demand, and you're going to compare that to a kip per inch capacity of a weld that you specify. That's what it all boils down to. Stick around. We're going to walk through the whole thing. So we have these two uh, forces happening. Well, for weld design, we pop into the design of welded structures. And if you go to, so unfortunately, I'm not going not gonna to show it today. But if you go to page 7.4-6, you will see that you have a force for shear equal to V over L. That, we already have those components. V is 40 kips. But what's L? You're like, what the hell is L? I don't have that yet. If you go back up here, L is just the length of your total weld. And that, we know, is 8 inches, but it's on each side. Okay, so if we look at it this way, it would look something like this. You have your angle, and there's actually a weld on this side and a weld on this side, and that is a total length of 8 inches. So you have 16 total inches of length of weld. So like I said, 16 inches. That gets us 2.5 kips per inch. See how that broke down into kips per inch? We're good there. Next, F sub B for bending, I like to think about it as like bending, for uh, moment demand on a weld is equal to M over S. Well, moment we have 90 kips, kip inch. Now you're like, oh shit, we don't have S. Well, no need to fear. We're going to scoot over here. And like I said above in that, in that problem there, we have basically this going on for our weld. So I didn't draw in the, uh, the angle or anything like that. I'm just representing with these two red lines uh, the, the welds as a line. And we know that each one is 8 inches, and the distance between them is what? Well, this is an L4 by 8, and it actually doesn't give us this dimension. So you're like, oh no, can we not solve for something? Well, believe it or not, the equation, and again, going back to this book, you have properties of welds treated as a line, and it's a, uh, a table that I'll actually I'll pop into here um, somewhere in the middle there for you. But when you have a weld geometry like this, your SX value is going to be equal to D, oops, is going to be equal to D squared over 3. And D is your depth, and this value right here is your B. But B is not in the equation for this type, of, uh, this type of welding geometry that we have here. So we don't have to worry about it, so we don't need it. We do have everything we need to solve the equation, though. So we plug in 8 inches squared over 3. That's going to get you 21.33. This is inches squared. Now, S, you're normally used to inches cubed. This is inches squared because we've reduced everything by one unit. So when we talked about changing that weld and having a thickness and having a length and we got rid of the thickness and just treated the weld as a line, we eliminated one of the units in our equations, which means the same thing carries over all the way through these other equations. So your S is not inches uh, cubed, it's now inches squared. So we have 21.33 inches squared. One more thing I forgot to mention and I do want to tell you is this is for the example when M is acting about uh, that x-axis on there, that dashed axis. So when your moment is cranking about that axis, which when we look up back up above here, that's exactly what's happening, right? You have your moment acting about there, and that would mean that from this view, call it view A, you have moment cranking about that axis. 
and then we said, there's our weld, and there's our weld. This is why I highly suggest getting that book, because, again, that table that I've showed you, uh, it's right in there. You could just copy it from the internet as well and paste it in one of your books, totally acceptable as well, but there is a lot more juicy meat in there, really good examples in there as well. All right, so we have S, uh, SX, so 21.33 inches squared, and if you look here, what does that reduce down to? That actually reduces down into 4.21 kips per inch. Once again, look at us, kips per inch. So we have now broken that down into uh, a force per length uh, unit. So looking real good here. So this is our demand. But you're like, there's two different numbers here. How do we, do we just add them together? Like, is that, is that what happens here? No, no, no. We don't just add them together. Basically, what we'd need to do next in order to combine these to get the overall demand on the weld is you call it F sub R equals the square root of FV squared plus FB squared. And then if you, if you had other demand acting on your weld, it would be, you know, if you had torsion or something else, then it would be uh, plus, you know, we'll call it F sub T and dot, 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 whatever other forces are acting on your weld, you keep on adding them all up and they're all, they're all squared and underneath that square root. For us though, it's just the two. So F sub R, which is our total demand per, on a per length of weld increment, is equal to the square root 2.5 squared plus 4.21 squared equal to 4.9 kips per inch. There's our demand. And now, you're like, well, what's our capacity? Well, let's assume that that load, that 40 kip load, was already factored under LRFD criteria, okay? So per LRFD design, we're looking for phi Rn for to, in order to figure out the capacity of the weld that's needed. That's going to be equal to our equation in the AASC steel manual. Let's jump over there. Here we are, AASC steel manual. And again, this is the 15th edition. This is that, uh, that blue manual. But I do believe the 14th edition is the one that is specified uh, and that should be referenced for the spring PE exam. So check the NCES website in the description below. They list out all the books that they are referencing for this spring's test. Just make sure of that, especially the ACI. ACI blows. So page 8-8, -8, and you have available strength of your weld based on this equation. And what do we have here? So you have your FEXX, so that's where we gotta, we gotta plug in, and we have the rest of it here. But if you'll notice, in our problem, we had an electrode of 70 KSI. Well, that means that we, that's what this unit is here. But if you look down here, they've actually simplified that equation even further. And they say for uh, welds using a 70 KSI electrode, you can actually break it down into an equation for LRFD and ASD right in these two little boxed solutions right here. So for LRFD, phi Rn is equal to 1.392 times D times length of weld. Let's use that and jump back. 1.392 times D times L. Well, L, you might be saying, okay, well, we used 16 inches above when we used L in, we're going to use green here, in this equation right here. We're not going to do that this time because we've broken down our demand into a force per inch uh, scenario. So we actually want to just keep this L as a per inch basis. So this is just going to be one inch. And that means we just need to find D. And that's actually what the question is asking. And phi is already included, so this number here already takes into account the phi factor, so you don't need to worry about that. It's all boiled down. If you're not overly set and comfortable with using this equation, start with the equation before that lists everything out and just plug everything in. Okay. But what we can do is say that, okay, well, phi Rn equals that equation, and it needs to meet or exceed 4.9 kips per inch in order for this problem to work. 
So if this is 1 inch, that just goes away. That leaves us with the equation 1.392d equals 4.9 kip per inch. And we know that d is an inch for units. Scroll on further, d is going to be equal to 3.52. And you're like, what does that mean? That that's inches? No. D is sixteenths of an inch. Okay? So this actually translates into 3.52 over 16 inches. That's what it translates to. That you could say, well, you can't round down to 3 sixteenths of an inch, but you can round up to the next sixteenth of an inch, which is usually the increments of weld sizes, to 4 sixteenths, which gets you one quarter inch fillet weld. Okay? We can scroll back over the top, and that would be the size using LRFD. What about ASD? ASD. So that is RN over omega is equal to, let's jump back over to steel manual. Here we are, same page, just right to the right. ASD it actually breaks down into that equation. So 0 0.928 times D times L. That's it. Jump it back. 0.928 D L. We know that L is just one inch, same thing. So that just goes away. So we make that equal to 4.9 kip per inch. D is equal to 5.28 over 16. Remember, because it's 16 of an inch. That comes out to about 6 over 16, which reduces to 3 eighths inch fillet weld. And AR, obviously LRFD, you have that much higher uh, load factors on there. And then for ASD, you have much lower load factors on there for your load combinations. So that's where obviously, since they don't specify at all or even hint at what they'd want you to use in this case, uh, you get two different size welds because you just don't know. You don't know the factors that would have been applied because if you if you started all the way from the beginning from deriving that 40 kip reaction, LRFD would be a significantly higher load. ASD would be, a, you know, let's call it the same, the 40 kip load. That means that when you're comparing the LRFD, this 4.9 kip would actually be higher. It, you know, it would be whatever it takes, but it would be higher, which means that your quarter inch fillet weld wouldn't work anymore, and most likely it would equal the 3 eighths fillet. They would match one another. Or vice versa. Your ASD load, if the 40 kips was the LRFD load, your ASD load would be less, hence your 3 eighths fillet would go down in size and it would match probably the 1 quarter inch fillet weld size. So it's not that LRFD allows you to size a lesser weld. It's that we never derived that 40 kips. We were just given it. So you, it's that you will get discrepancies there. One thing before you go, this is a little side tidbit that I actually learned for the first time. You might be asking the question in your head going, well, wait a minute, Rich. They talked about specifically using a, sh uh, using a shielding metal arc process. So that is SMAW, shielding metal arc welding. Is there anything, any other type of weld that you could be using? Well, yes. There are. There's, there's several different types of welding procedures that can be used. This one right here is the most standard that you will see out in the field. It is, it is used, I want to say, like 90% of the time. Don't take my word for that, but it is just about the only thing that's used in construction, when you know on site when things are being built and welded in place. Um, this type of welding is used. Now, there is another one called submerged arc welding, saw. That one is used primarily in uh, manufacturing shops, so like big steel mills where they're creating pipes and creating sections, you know, because when you think about it, your wide flange, they don't just mine wine flanges out of the, out of the natural landscape. They don't just uncover that little baby wide flange and it's like just perfectly that shape, okay? It's, it's still ore that gets taken, processed, smelted, uh, milled, and then it's actually three pieces, and they are welded together uh, in a huge uh, factory manufacturing facility. So when it's under those controlled environments, that's when you get 
this type of welding more often. That's about the extent of what I understand. There's a couple more, and if you want to see them all, we'll pop over to chapter J right now. Because the big thing you're questioning is, well, is one of them stronger than another one? And this is what I have deducted. If you dip over to table J2.1, you will actually see all the different kinds of welding processes that you could choose from. And we talked about, there's your submerged right there, and then you have your shielded metal arc right there. So you can use them for all cases, your shield metal arc. And uh, the only thing that I think I can derive, and I might be incorrect on this, so please, someone who is much better experienced with uh, welding or is a welder, comment below, talk to me, I wanna know this. But what I'm seeing is that for the effective throat, which is integral to the equation to figure out the strength of your weld, no matter what type of weld it is, for shielded metal arc, you get, and again, this is, this is PJPs, this is not fillets, but you get a depth of groove minus one eighth of an inch for your effective throat using uh, SMAW, as opposed to saw, you get to take the full depth of the groove. So in my mind, that means your effective throat is larger, which means that you overall would get a stronger weld using a saw or one of these other procedures up above here, as opposed to using the shielded metal arc welding procedure. That's just my hunch. I need to dig into it a little more, but I wanted to run that by the team flip it back onto you. You guys get into the books. You guys talk amongst yourselves and come back to me in the comments and let me know what you think. But that's just a side tangent. Let's get back really fast because I forgot to freaking do the most important thing. Go in green, that most satisfying answer of B, quarter inch, or C, three eighths inch. Again, LRFD versus ASD. There you have it. I'm Rich with Team Kesteva. Thank you all for being here. If you like today's content, one more like, one more subscribe. I'd love it. This team would love it. If you're part of that brave, crazy crypto world and you want to leave a tip, I'd also appreciate it to help us grow and flourish and help out more engineers. And until next time, I will see everybody later. Good luck on your studies.